Hi, this is uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> this is Calvin Cox. It's August eighth, two thousand thirteen, at seven twenty-seven p.m. and it's Thursday evening. Um, what I want to talk to you about is uh, something very personal, uh, but hopefully there would be a lesson that can be learned by other people. Um, if you have children, the greatest asset you can instill in your children is to teach them to think for themselves um, and teach them to realize what they want. Teach them how to pick, you know, pick things. Uh, and that's very important because it has to do with everything from choosing a job, choosing a mate, picking a home, uh, going out and selecting a car. Uh, many, many things in life involve choice and if you haven't really learned the process of how to choose, um, I think I've eventually gotten there, but I don't think I was really taught when I was younger, how to choose things, how to look at things and analyze them, like I tried to teach my own daughter, which was vastly different from what you know I feel I was taught. Now this is my own perception on things. I don't think that uh, you know my mother would agree with me on my perceptions. <laughs> A lot of parents never agree with their kids, and the kids don't agree with their parents. One of my views is that I was primarily thought to pray to Jesus, give the church money, and listen and listen to the church leaders, and so then you will go to heaven. That's wonderful, except for the whole problem there is all the time that you do still remain here on earth how do you manage to live how do you deal with the people around you how do you deal with life every day how do you find your niche you know church is great it has its place um, and learning how to live life and be a part of life and enjoy life is something other aside from church okay uh, I think a lot of uh, preachers like to, to meld the two and don't allow you to think, you know, outside of their little church world. They like to insist that, you know, it all has to be one one unit. Well, you know, I, I go to work and I uh, work with people that I think are fine people and I don't really know how religious they are, if they're religious at all. And... Uh, you know, uh, not only do I have to work with those people, and I'm willing to work with them, but, um, you know, you, you have to live in a world aside from your little church, church world. I remember uh, being raised Adventist. You know, there's a lot of Adventists who are raised Adventist. Uh, they go to, uh, they go to work for the remainder of their lives in Adventist institutions and then, you know, they never really step out of the Adventist world and for the people like me who do, and there's lots of people like me, um, you know, you have to learn how to deal with life and other people and other beliefs and everything else and um, that all has to go back to your training when you're young Anyway, I have limited time on this. Let me check the time on the... So, um, so you want to teach your children to think for themselves and learn to go through the process in their own mind of what they want and how to choose things and how to pick things and um, that's critically important 
One thing that happened to me is I had a girlfriend in high school who was my high school sweetheart and she was really the one that I felt very um, at home with, you know, very, very much so. And she was a sweet woman. And um, it just ended up that because I listened to other family members, I was basically asking them for approval. And why the hell I did that, I don't know. Because they weren't the ones who was going to be living with this person. If they, you know, if I got married to her, would they have been paying my bills? Would they have been uh, living with this person all day, you know, all, uh, you know, for the rest of their lives? No. Uh, you know, one thing I really learned about it, people, everybody has an opinion. They say, opinions are like assholes, everybody has one. And, you know, that's very true. Um, you know, I, I, I really regret that I didn't stand up to my mother. Um, back when, you know, I was saying, oh, we want to get married, and and she was like, well, she can't, you know, I just, in her mind, this girl was not up to par. Well, you know, this girl had a very stable family. She did got A's in school. She had a job. She had an in and got a job. She's been at the same job for over 30 years. Very stable. Uh, is very responsible. Has a son that's going to the University of Edinburgh, in Scotland. You know, all these things. She was a winner. A bigger winner than any of them. And has proven herself. She has left all these people that judged her. She has left them in the dust. Way. She's gone light years past any of them. You know, I, it's, it's really pathetic. Everybody, I mean, I feel a fool for not having been able to conceptualize that situation back then and thought through it more carefully and said, you know, don't ask these people. Just, you know, mind your own business. When it comes to my day to marry this woman, if you want to be there, fine. If not, so you're not. Uh, it was really a mess. Instead, it was like, my mind going up against Mama's mind, and Mama said no, and that, you know. So what happened, I moved on away from home and ended up, you know, with the party crowd to a degree. And because of that, I ended up really going the wrong way, down the wrong creek, the wrong path, you know. And uh, now I sit here at age 55, and I get to sit and watch someone else enjoy their life that as far as I'm concerned I really belonged in that life with that person not someone else and let me check time again. And so actually this is a dual message. Is it a message to parents who have children that are long, that are still young enough? You can work with them and teach them the little processes of picking, choosing and finding out, figuring out what they like. And it's not a message for, not just a message for parents who have kids, but it's a message for kids who are old enough to be picking their love interest love interest being the one that will hopefully be the one they'll be with the rest of their lives and they'll manage to put together a life that's that you would want to have you know that you would end up being relatively happy and and uh, um, you know be in a stable uh, relationship that goes on you know uh, for a long time and uh, so to the people out there who uh, who are in their teens and you know they have a love interest and and uh, they're kind of asking other people what they think and on and on, quit doing that. I mean, there's 
there's other ways to find out, there's other ways to figure out uh, if this person is someone that, that would be viable for you. Uh, one thing is how they treat other people. Uh, get around this person and their family, see how they treat your other family members. Uh, do they seem to be level-headed? Do, the, or do they have a job or are they interested in finding a job? Are they, you know, trying to do something with their, their lives? Uh, if they happen to be a real heavy, heavy drug user, uh, you probably would like to steer clear of that. That could, could I believe, be a, a pretty bad indicator of their future situation and stability and happiness. Real heavy drug usage is, is that's a bad thing. I really believe that's that's not a good thing. Or if they're a super heavy drinker, that's also a, a usually a really bad indicator. Um, but the worst thing you can do is not think for yourself and listen to someone else and allow them to steer you away from the one that you feel most at home with. Thank you.